Unless you've been sticking with it since the very beginning and have been paying really close attention, it's easy to get overwhelmed by all of the different Kingdom Hearts products that are out there. The franchise may only just now be finally approaching the release of its third official mainline entry, but when it comes to spin-offs, side stories, and re-releases, Kingdom Hearts is richer than Scrooge McDuck. Subtitles like 358 over two days might leave some scratching their heads, but many of these side games were actually created with the intention of helping potential players fathom the dense world of Kingdom Hearts, such as Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, a 2D sprite-based Game Boy Advance title that many players, including diehard fans of the series, missed completely. But that game has since been remade from the ground up in the familiar Kingdom Hearts style. And even though this undoubtedly helped it reach a wider audience, not many have managed to complete Kingdom Hearts re-chain of memories. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist. Today's video is brought to us in part by patreon.com slash that one video gamer. That's right, you folks at home have been sponsoring us for the past few years, and thanks to you guys, we are able to do new videos every Tuesday and Friday. So, if you want to sponsor us on the show, head over to patreon.com slash that one video gamer and kind of join us in the Discord community. There's a bunch of cool rewards. It's really fun, it's really hype and thank you for supporting us for all these years. Now when it comes to Kingdom Hearts, I am one of those guys that loves the original two games and I've kind of fallen in love with Birth by Sleep. But other than that, I haven't really gone outside or beyond that confined zone. And so I thought, you know what, this year supposedly we're getting back on track with Kingdom Hearts 3 after all these years and I thought, you know what, what better way to build that hype and enjoy another Kingdom Hearts game like Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories. Let's begin. Yes! Right. Now, it didn't take long after the release of the first Kingdom Hearts game for Square to know that they had a hit on their hands. The credits rolled and RPG, Disney, and anime fans were all left frothing at the mouth, waiting for more. But the sequel was four agonizing years away. Luckily, Square Enix cooked something up just two years later that gave Kingdom Hearts junkies their fix. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories hit shelves and surprised players with its unique gameplay blend of action RPG and card collection. But even though Chain of Memories story bridges the gap between the first Kingdom Hearts and the then hotly anticipated sequel, not everyone had a Game Boy Advance on hand, meaning a lot of people missed out on this odd little chapter in Sora and the Gang's adventures. Rather than simply pour Chain of Memories to newer hardware, Square completely remade the game for the PS2 in the same style as the original Kingdom Hearts games. It was called Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories, or RE, I don't, I think it's Re. And although we didn't get it until 2008, it introduced the intercool to plenty of newcomers and allowed some fans to finally complete their Kingdom Hearts collections. Now, translating the game from 2D to 3D was a huge undertaking, but the investment paid off since Re Chain of Memories was eventually ported to the PS3 and later the PS4 as a part of the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD Remix collection. Finally, the black sheep of the Kingdom Hearts family was just as modernized as the rest, including trophy support. You guys just had to stick trophies in there, didn't ya? Well, that's only one of the many things I'll have to worry about as I complete this game on the PlayStation 4. It may not be as long or complicated as other Kingdom Hearts titles, but the card collection aspect is one of the biggest, most obvious red flags I have ever encountered in my career. Hooray! 
Yay! Now, first off, I am planning on beating this game no less than four times. After completing Sora's campaign, an extra campaign known as Reverse Rebirth is unlocked, in which players assume the role of Sora's eternally dark and handsomely tragic rival, Riku. I want to make sure I play through both of these on normal and get used to things first before I dive deep into the chaos of proud mode, especially because card games and action card games are definitely not my thing. Next, I'll be fulfilling the universal obligations of playing an RPG and bringing both Sora and Riku up to their maximum level of perspectives, which is 99. I expect this to be an absolute grind fest and I expect to stop earning relevant rewards long before I reach that goal. RPGs are fun. Also, I'll have to make sure to collect each and every one of Sora's slights, which are the special attacks based on combinations of cards. There's reportedly a good amount of them, and while many are practically handed to you, I know I'll end up having to spend time hunting down a couple. And speaking of cards, there's this looming dread of having to find and collect each and every card in the game. I don't even have to do any research to know that there are a ton of cards, and that some of them will be a bitch to get. I'm pretty sure I'll be spending more time grinding for these cards than grinding for levels. And that, my friends, is a very scary thought. I mean, we've all been there as kids, right? We all know how dangerous it is to get into collectible card games. These virtual cards may seem more manageable, but they are not. This is an addiction for kids. Some of you guys out there could have put yourselves through college if you did not play Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon or Magic. Admit it! Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories pulls off a spectacular magic trick. It totally makes you forget that it was originally a handheld game. It looks, sounds, and feels almost exactly like the original Kingdom Hearts. Things will feel extremely familiar to veterans of the series, especially with its deja vu-like plot. But every now and then, Rechain of Memories will remind you that it's not exactly a replica of its big brothers. The story starts off innocently enough, right where the first Kingdom Hearts ended, with Sora, Donald, and Goofy bumbling down a road to nowhere on their eternal quest to reunite with their friends. But they eventually bump into a mysterious hooded figure who spits riddles at them before leading them to a warped looking manor called Castle Oblivion. Once inside, things start getting funky really quickly. One, Sora's gang loses most of their powers and abilities, effectively Metroiding them. Two, the only way they can advance through the castle is by using cards based on their battle tactics and on distorted versions of locations from their memory. Memories. And three, Sora slowly losing even more memories as he explores further into the castle. The idea of a character slowly losing themselves over the duration of a story is kind of cool. And it's certainly better than the cliche of amnesiac main characters. Good God, we do not need any more of them. But Chain of Memories narrative is seriously hindered by the fact that it was always intended as a mere side story. The reason we're revisiting these worlds we've already been to is because the story clearly isn't allowed to advance the plot or develop the characters too much. That kind of stuff is reserved for mainline entries. Instead, what we have here is essentially filler. And I know that's kind of a dirty word, but let's be honest. Although Chain of Memories fills in some of the series narrative gaps, the story is mostly rehash. It's wonderful to interact with so many beloved characters again, but retreading the same introductions isn't very exciting. Chain of Memories does spend a lot of time setting up and teasing a bunch of characters and plot lines that don't really matter too much to its own story, but will go on to affect the series in a big way later on. It's a little disappointing that it sacrifices its own narrative in an attempt to flesh out the series world, but at least I finally understand what the hell was going on in that opening cutscene in Kingdom Hearts 2. Playing that game without playing this one first raised a lot of questions for me back in the day. Now I get it, this game had a very specific job to do, and developing things definitely wasn't it. But when it comes to recreating things, Chain of Memories knocks it out of the park. Everything looks faithful as hell. All the characters look wonderful in their original Kingdom Hearts style, almost like they were meant to be that way all along. Every character looks crisp as hell, thanks to the upgrade from the Game Boy Advance 
to the PS2, and from the PS2 to the PS3, and from the PS3 to the PS4. Man, if there's one thing that Square's gotta make sure of, it's that people are always gonna be able to play their Kingdom Hearts games somehow. That and all their protagonists are gonna be pretty as hell. Come on, Square Enix, it's 2018. We're ready for an ugly Square protagonist. You know, I guess that's kind of what the original PS1 games were if we're talking literal squares, but. While most of Chain of Memories locations are returners from Kingdom Hearts, a select few environments and elements are previews of Kingdom Hearts 2, which would be really cool if the game hadn't come out over a decade ago, but it serves as some nice connective tissue between the two games. Every locale visually recreates their respective worlds really well, but these levels don't nearly have the same amount of exploratory potential or even the general level design as their original incarnations do. Most of the time, it feels like you're playing inside an isolated box-like room rather than a fully fleshed out world, which is exactly the premise of the game. Things feel extremely linear, but it all makes sense since this was originally released in 2D on the Game Boy Advance. But the linearity is just one of the very few things that reminds me that I'm playing the Kingdom Hearts equivalent of the $6 million man. We can rebuild it. We can make it prettier. Chain of Memories music is wonderfully performed and sounds just like the stuff from the mainline games. It can get a bit repetitive, but it's Disney! And the voice acting is perfect for those who like anime and like it dripping with melodrama. You will just have to give some more thought to who it is that's most important to you. The main characters sometimes sound a bit wooden, but the Disney veterans are always delightful, which pretty much sums up this entire game. It's a delightful little encore of the first Kingdom Hearts that's damn near aesthetically indistinguishable from the first one. Quick, what's this Aladdin from? The original or Chain of Memories? Boom, Kingdom Hearts. What about this Ursula? Bam, it's actually a toy Ursula. This cloud? Bang, that's a copy of the $6 million man season one on DVD. See, you can't tell the difference. Kingdom Hearts Re-Chain of Memories takes the bread and butter of RPGs and spices them up with some collectible card flavoring that's surprisingly refreshing. The basic mechanics are super solid, even when the game inevitably devolves into farming for cards. Chain of Memories has two basic gameplay types, exploration and combat, and both of them are dictated by the power of the cards. Playing through each world means proceeding through room after room on the way to the boss area, but the contents of those rooms are often less left up to the player. Each floor of Castle Oblivion has a default floor plan with a preset amount of rooms and a default layout. But those rooms become populated only after the player has activated their map cards. Each map card yields a slightly different effect, like creating rooms full of Heartless or creating rooms full of Sleepy Heartless. Oh. Other rooms might contain a single item, some have item shops, while still others could be full of extremely buff bad guys, if that's what you choose. Each blank room has a minimum number tied to it that requires a map card of equal or higher value in order to be synthesized. There's a lot of customization potential in the room synthesization mechanic, and managing your map cards end up being critical for the completion process. But most of the time, these rooms are just gonna be teeming with enemies, and most of the time, you're gonna be slaughtering them. And that's fine by me because Chain of Memories card-based combat is fan-bloody-tastic. And that means a lot coming for me because I hate card-based games most of the time. Sora's jump and dodge abilities remain pretty much unchanged from Kingdom Hearts, but everything else is tied directly to the cards. Even your enemy's attacks are all card-based. Customizing and tweaking your deck build and then trying that build out in battle is where a lot of this game's fun lies. You can have up to 99 cards in your battle deck and each card card has a value printed on it, which denotes its potential effectiveness in battle. Basically, higher value cards trump lower value cards. If an enemy attacks you with the four value card, and you select an attack card with a value of five or more, then you'll break the enemy's attack, negating it completely and leaving them stunned. But buyer beware, that system works both ways, so be careful about spamming those low value attacks. And trust me, you're gonna do that early on, thinking that this is Kingdom Hearts, but it is not. It seems like the thing to do would be be to stack your deck with as many high value cards as possible. Nice try, kid. Each card also has a CP value. The more powerful the card, the more CP it costs, and your deck has a set CP limit. So you can't just stuff all of your best cards in no matter how many times you flip the table. 
So there's this beautiful balance going on with your deck construction, in which you try and evenly spread out your best cards, as well as select the ones that best fit into your CP restriction, making for some unexpectedly deep and fun strategy in the middle of all of this chaos. There are plenty of different types of cards too. There's magic cards, summon cards, enemy cards, which you can use to give yourself passive buffs, and item cards too. But if the battles run long, you're bound to run out of cards. And that's what the reload technique is for. It completely refills your deck mid-battle, but each time you use it, it'll take longer to refill. Shout outs to this game for providing exciting and elegant solutions to gameplay problems. Sora's special slight abilities require you to stock up two or three cards before unleashing them in a powerful combo attack. For example, combining two Blizzard cards together will get you Blizzara, but three will get you Blizzaga. There are slights that create attack strings, ones that use your friend's abilities, and so on and so forth. But what makes these slights extra useful is the fact that their card value is the sum of all of the cards used to construct them, which means they're pretty damn hard to break, but they can always be broken by zero value cards, which are capable of breaking just about any attack in the game. Damn, that's the power of nothingness, dude. You'll also occasionally be rewarded with the chance to turn one of your cards into a premium version of itself. Doing so doesn't really change its effect, but it does reduce the card's CP, easing things up for your deck build. Premium cards won't return to you when you reload though but they're perfect to use as the first card in your slight recipes, since that card is always locked out of reloads anyways. Smart deck building, my dudes, let's go! Playing as Riku, by contrast, is a little disappointing. He doesn't have nearly the same amount of customization options as Sora, he doesn't use any summons, he doesn't use any magic, and you can't even tweak your deck at all when playing as him. He's just given a slightly different deck at the start of each world. But Riku does have some cool techniques all to himself, including the Rapid Break, which gives gives him a damage buff when you break an opponent's attack right as they initiate it. He's also got a dark mode because of course he does, and a duel system which lets him play I Declare War whenever you play an attack card with the same value as an enemy's. But in general, I am seriously impressed that this game, which started out as a rather unimportant little handheld title, contains such awesome mechanics. The sharpening of your skills culminates in each world's boss fight. Each boss's strategies are vastly different from from the last, and they show off both Kingdom Hearts' skillful boss design as well as the importance of careful deck management. By the time I tackled Proud Mode, I had long since worked out my preferred flow of attack cards and slights, making subsequent playthroughs way more fun. Sure, Proud Mode kicked my ass, like it always does with ridiculous damage and spongy ass enemies, but I always felt in control with access to my deck list, except for Riku's campaign, but thank God it's so short. Grinding up to level 99 with both of them was a bit rough, since it involved constantly making new rooms and killing all the enemies inside for experience. But since that's the same method for grinding certain cards, it felt like slightly more efficient grinding. Even obtaining all the slights wasn't that bad. You don't even have to perform them. You just have to own the cards that you need to make them, and most of these cards are unlocked as you play and level up. The only times I had to go out of my way for specific slight cards was making sure to open up some chests in each world, and beating some mini games in the 100 acre wood. Ugh, why do they keep making the 100 acre wood about mini games? Why? But a certain group of cards ends up making things on fun. First off, there's an entire group of really cool cards that you can only get if you play through the entirety of a copy of Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2 that's included in the collection. And by playthrough, I mean watch through since it's just one long cutscene in this collection pack. And you have to make sure to watch it before you even start playing Chain of Memories or else these cards won't even show up at all. So now we're having to play entire entirely other games, or in this case, watch entirely other movies just to complete this game. Now that is utterly unacceptable. But of course, RNGesus had to show up to the party at some point. Certain enemy cards only drop as random rewards after battles. The cards you get correspond to the very last enemy you defeat in the battle, but the drop rates are sometimes extremely rare. Imagine creating the same rooms over and over and over again just to kill the same Heartless over and over and over again and never getting that one stupid card you need. However, because of the fact that we have to grind Sora to level 
level 99. Anyways, I ended up getting all of the cards necessary before I hit that level cap. So pick your goddamn poison. Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories is at its best when you're challenged to think about your deck choices and executing those choices, but it's at its absolute worst during the mindless grind in order to do it all. I don't want to farm experience points. I don't want to kill bad guys over and over again. I don't want to play as Riku. I want to build my deck. I want to do it because it's fun. I want to do bad things. I want to do slides with my cards. I just want to do hood rat stuff with Donald and Goofy. They may be minimal, but I've got to hand it to Chain of Memories for actually including some bonuses for its players. At this point, I'm happy with scraps, and that's what this game is giving us. Besides unlocking Riku's campaign, beating the game will also unlock a theater mode, in which you can review any of the game's many, many cutscenes. But it's only after you've collected every other card in the game that the last two cards become available. There's the gold card that lets you restock your premium cards, and the platinum card that makes you invincible. And of course, there is no 100% bonus to speak of. Normally, not getting anything for so much grinding would leave a very bitter aftertaste. But Rechain of Memories is so short and its core gameplay is so good that I'm willing to forgive and forget. Well, not forget. No one could ever forget that Botox looking genie. You looked fine before, dude. What happened? While I completed Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories, there were 52 deaths. 48 trophies unlocked, 144 slights achieved, 152 cards collected, 110 hours of total playtime, and three hours wasted watching Kingdom Hearts 358 over two midday long division, whatever the hell it's called. I'm just, I'm not gonna get that time back. I probably would rather have played the DS game. Chain of Memory snuck up on me. I didn't think anything of it since it was a side story and I kind of wrote it off unfairly since I traditionally shy away from card games. But I'm glad I took a chance and discovered this cool corner of Kingdom Hearts history. The grinding for minimal payoff keeps it from being worthy of completion, but whether you're a super fan of the series or casually curious, it's definitely worth remembering to try this one out. When it comes to playing Kingdom Hearts, these games are full of fun, love, albeit confusing story and gameplay mechanics across the board. When it comes to completing these games, they tend to take a lot of time, a lot of grinding, a lot of focus, and a lot of RNG luck and hope. And in the case of Chain of Memories, Rechain of Memories, that whole aspect definitely applies here. So, with that in mind guys, I give this game my completionist rating of Finish it. Finish it. That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to stay up on all notifications. We do new videos every Tuesday and Friday. And hey, if you missed our newest music video for Big Bad Bosses and the Eggman track, you can give that a click or tap right here on screen. Guys, I've been The Completionist, and I'll see you next week for another brand new episode. Bye.